welcome to Excel Highway. In today's video, I want to share with you a container loading model I built in Google Sheets. It's a very simple model, but it's very effective. You can change containers and see the cost, change the pallets and see the difference in cost. You can change the number of units, you can change the SKUs, and basically play with this until you get a result that you're happy with. Um, it's pretty straightforward, um, not too complicated, and I want to share with you how I built this so you can do the same for you. So first off, we have the setup sheet. In the setup sheet, you define all of these parameters. So I have two different containers, 20 and 40 feet. I'm looking at the internal measurements of the container because that's the available dimensions for loading. So I have the height, the width, and the length, and this is all in metrics, metric units, centimeters, and kg, but of course you can switch this to inches if you want, um, or of course prepare whatever containers you want to use. Just a simulation of the cost, so let's say $4,000 for the 40 and 3000 for the 20 feet, because the cost is important. Um, to understand the difference between them. And I also have the max weight, uh, which I will take into account later on. So the max maximum loading weight uh, for each container, that depends on the destination. So of course you can uh, do this by destination as well. Uh, complicated a bit, but that's up to you. Then you have the palette. So here I put three types of palette, Euro, Finish, and Standard, um, with their dimensions and their weight. And of course, you can have more or change this or whatever you want. And your items, uh, obviously, this will change. So the, the name of the item, the dimensions, and the weight um, of that item. And you know, in, in this simulation, I'm talking about boxes. So you can take uh, each item and put it on top of each other but not mix them up, right? I'm, I'm, building, I'm building this uh, pretty simple version, which you can only put one item on one palette. Uh, these drop downs will be used in the model. So these two are manually, and this has transpose. So if you add more items, they will just appear here and be selected. Um, so that's the first part, pretty straightforward. Then we go into the model. A sheet. So first off, you have the drop downs. If you're not familiar with the drop downs, it's very simple. Click on data, data validation. Now let's let's just do a new one. Add rule. Then you just select drop down from range. Click this. Select the range. Go over here. I like to leave the last digit open so it goes all the way to the last row. Click on OK. Done and done. And then I created this one. I don't like the gray area, so uh, I click on advanced options and change it to arrow. So that's the data validation, and you do it for here for the palette size, the SKUs, uh, so three drop downs, um, and to select. Now let's start looking at the formulas on how we reach the final number, which is the total cost, which is what's important. So the dimensions of the container and also for the palette and also for the item itself, it's the same function. I'm using index match, index to the range, this range over here. So I'm going to be comparing the name. So it's item or palette name, container name, and the, and the headers of this, the first column. So I'm going to find basically the, the combination between, between the name I'm searching and the row. So that's when you use just index match, it's very simple to use. So you highlight the area, which is A2 through M6, then match A3, which is the um, header for the first column. In that, that, in that column, A2 through A6, comma zero, so it's a perfect match. And then I'm looking for the uh, column, so that's gonna be this case B2, and you'll notice all the dollars. So I built this so when I drag it, it's still gonna work. So it it stays 
on that column. And when I drag it, it's also going to work because it stays with that row. So I'm using that for all of these and for all of these, it's exactly the same formula. Okay. Uh, also for the weight index match and also for the maximum weight. So that's pretty clear. Let's take a look at this pallets per container. So that just calculates how many pallets would fit in this container. So if it's 233 centimeters and the dimension is 120, so only one container. I'm using round down because you can't fit uh, 1.9 pallets. So you have to use round down. Same for the second dimension, which is the length. And that's how you see the number of columns that fit. Uh, that is the container cost also coming from here. And the required containers, it's going to be calculated in the end. So we'll get to that. So, so far we selected and we get the dimensions and everything is automatic. So if I change that to 40, so everything changes. All right, let's move on to this. You select an item. You can have these all blank. So you select, oops, forgot to update the formula like so. Yeah, that looks better. So you select, for example, your first item, you can put 200 units, and you will see the height, width, length, and weight, same index match that we saw before. Now let's take a look at this line. I'm, I wanna understand how many units I can fit in each level on the pallet. So I'm gonna first check how many times the width enters the width, and how many times the length enters the length, so to speak. So it's, as you can see, it's, um, you can fit it four times on the width and four times on the length, so that's 16. But let's, let's take a different SKU that has different dimensions. Okay, uh, not good, let's take another one. Let's take, yeah, this is, this is a, a better example. So I can fit two, two boxes, so to speak, if it's organized that way. Is it 75 one time and 55 two time? So that's two time, two boxes. If I make a switch and put the 75 um, width on the length, I can only fit one, and 55 on the width, I can only fit one. So I could, would only fit one. So that would be very bad utilization. So I would, I'm taking the maximum between them because there's only two options, right? We have two dimensions, so there's only two options. So it's pretty simple. So I'm going to use the, the, the this option, which is uh, a width for width and length for length. Now, this shows you the pallet utilization. So you can fit two boxes that these are their dimensions. So that's that's what you see the formula over here 17 times 12 times 13. that's the surface that you get divided by the surface of the palette itself so it's 69 percent if i take another item here you can see it has a better utilization it's 90 percent okay because you can fit three times four so 12 and if i take the last one you get 100 percent because that's exactly matching. You get you can fit two units on the width and three units, so that's six. It's 100% utilization. Now we're checking the height dimension. That's important as well. All right, three dimensions. So so basically, you have the height of the box. So you're going to divide the internal height minus the pallet height. That's that part over there. Divided by the height of the box, and round down zero and I use the if error as you saw just so it's clean if you don't select anything it looks like this and not NAs and all that. So that's the number of uh, basically boxes you can fit in the height. So that shows you the height utilization. Same technique so it's 50 times 4 that's 200 so 200 divided by 235 that's 85 percent utilization. Now this shows you the column utilization. So the column is basically, think of it as a pallet all the way to the top of the container. So this SKU 
with this type of palette and this type of container, a column will utilize 59% of the uh, volume, okay, for that column, because it's only 69% on the surface and only 85% of the height. So it's it brings you to 60%. 40, 41% is going to be air that you're shipping. Column quantity is how many columns you need for, for uh, or how many, sorry, how many boxes or units are going to be in a column. So there's four on the height, two on the ground, so it's eight. The column weight, that's going to be the weight of the pallet times, sorry, the weight of the pallet over here plus the weight of the unit times the number of units per column. So 102 kgs. The required number of columns, that is the quantity needed divided by the quantity per column. Again, rounded up. All right, so you need 25 columns. Even though 25 times eight, that's exactly 200. But for example, three times 84, that's much more than 200, but you still need three columns because it won't fit. It would make, let's say, more sense in this case to fit uh, 84 times 2. Okay, so you'd fit 32 less units, but it will be a much better utilization. But that's just something you can look at when you work with this um, model. So that's the number of columns that you need for each item. Now we're calculating how many columns you need overall. That's just the sum of it. And now I want to understand how many columns or how many containers you need. Because if we need 35 columns, we're going to divide that number by the number of columns or pallets per container, round it up. So I need two containers. And again, it's not going to be very efficient because I have room for 40. So those are going to be five, uh, room for five. That's on the... A surface perspective. Now I want to check the weight because I have a weight a limitation as well when loading containers. So the weight is going to be the column weight times the required columns and sum of all columns. And here I'm going to divide it by the number over here. So 20 tons is the max. This is only 5.6 tons. So the weight is not going to be a limitation. And it's always one of one of this, either you have a weight limitation or a surface limitation or volume limitation. So these are how all the formulas are built. Now let's look at just the final, final result. So the container cost, that is pulling from the setup, should be over here. Required is the maximum between the both of them. So it's either the maximum for surface or the maximum for weight. Surface utilization, that's going to show me how much of the surface I'm utilizing, which is important. It's very simple. So it's going to be the, um, over here, the number of columns times the pallet size times the length. So that's going to be the entire surface divided by the, the length and the width of the container times the number of containers. So 75% utilization. And the total cost, that's the container cost times required containers. Now just to show you that if I change the weight here to say 500 kgs per unit, then my constraint, I exaggerated, but my constraint is now because this is 454 tons, so I'm going to need, I'm going to need 23 containers. So I'm going to be shipping a lot of air here. And as you can see now this is showing me that I can ship 23 or I need, I need 22 containers at a 7% surface utilization. So not efficient, but this, this happens sometimes. Maybe I exaggerated a bit, but just to show you that both options work. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I, if you want this uh, file, just leave a comment and I'd be happy to share it with you. Please subscribe and like, and I will see you next time.